Welcome back to another edition of Zero Blog 30. Today we have three rounds of the magazine. Round number one, we're going to give out some T's and P's to the public relations crew at the Air National Guard this week as we got not one, but two gentlemen keeping them real busy. One dropping some top secret docs in a Discord chat, no big deal. And the other one trying to hire himself off the web off of a website as a, as a hitman. He wants to yeah, be... Yeah, this hitman story... Yeah. The Air National Guard is just popping off this month, folks. 23-year-old so. Kate walks in, and there's a 22-year-old dude who says that he can be an assassin in the Air National Guard and shows you the website and the email that he signed up to. You, He getting it or no? No, oddly no. enough, no. That's a no I, for me. I think that's hindsight bias, Kate. I think 23-year-old mm. Kate might, might give it a go. Um, that's probably not for me well, to say. Well, you gotta see the mirror <laughs> selfies both of these gentlemen took. Oh yeah, mirror. And then I think twenty-three-year-old Kate would definitely fall for Bill Paxton and True Lies when he said he was a spy. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. But that's yeah, Bill spy Paxton. Would be hard okay. Not to fall for right, like a right. little bit of bravery. Round mm. number two. There's some drama in the special forces as old Eddie Gallagher and Dan Crenshaw are beefing with each other and david goggins was in on that too like the whole yeah. squad was in. oh on i didn't know david. goggins got in the mix wow oh, yeah. yeah i don't know who david goggins is but goggins oh really is the, he's oh. that yeah. he's that dude that goes on rogan all the time he's he's the guy who is a i think he was a ranger a navy seal does like 100 mile races and shit like that all the time Super, ah, like, okay. Motivational guy. Lifetime Hardo. All right. Lifetime Hardo. Yeah. So Got Dan it. Crenshaw was going after him about his record in combat. And talk, like there was some special forces T big time. And finally, round number three, we're going to do another edition of Good Initiative, Bad Judgment. Let's get going and hop right into number round number one. We'll Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Proper Wild. If you're suffering from the symptoms of ADHD like I do, which includes a lack of focus, no productivity, your brain is constantly wandering around without a place to go. You need to check out Proper Wild's clean all-day energy shot. Proper Wild uses organic caffeine stacked with L-theanine, which has clinically been shown to way to boost your energy, focus, and productivity without the jitters or the crash. There's no preservatives, no artificial flavors, no horrible chemicals, just a natural tasting energy shot with clean ingredients that work. My wife's out of town this week in Orlando. I'm here with the children by myself. Cardi just lost a tooth and it was dramatic they thought that there was a little bit of the tooth stuck into their gum still everything was going crazy we were up late into the middle of the night i had to wake up and get going with some meetings and some podcasts so what do i do i have some proper wild and next thing you know i was ready to go if you want to feel that same way go to properwild.com slash barstool to try proper wild for 30 percent off we got kate Round number one, Air National Guard, as I said, just absolutely popping off. And I, you really don't think about the Air National Guard very often, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. They may be if the If you're in the Air National of... Guard and found that offensive, hit up Kate at Kate at Barstool. Hit me up. I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like I don't think Add that to the often. list. Yeah, add it to Volunteer the list. Volunteer firefighters, yeah. Air, Air National, National Guard. Air National Guard. They Kate basically hates thing. anybody in uniform who volunteers. Yeah. Yeah, Anyone who's just trying to give back to this country, Kate, nope. No, thanks. No. Probably not good for the show. No, anyway, last Thursday, the FBI raided the home of 21-year-old airman Jack Teixeira, uh, or his mom's house. No relation was... to former Yankees great Mark Teixeira. No. No, I accidentally Googled the wrong name, and I was like, wait a minute. This guy's <laughs> very talented. This guy's anyway, impressive. <laughs> yeah, he was taken into custody for some real bad OPSEC choices. So this, I mean, this, that's saying it as lightly as that is possible. Such a sanitized yep. version. <laughs> yes. An OPSEC place is leaving your cell phone on with your location whenever you're going to the mall. Like this is a little bit different. I'll just tell you this: what he did would make Tina from the cybersecurity training we all had to do lose her fucking mind. Oh, yeah. She would claw over that cubicle. Oh yeah, she'd and her pants. Really, yeah. She would. Anyways, so he was a low-level computer tech at Otis Air National Guard Base in Sandwich, Massachusetts, where he worked nights helping to maintain secure networks. So he's like an IT guy. Uh, there, he had broad access to a secure facility where he could access a global network of classified material from the military and 17 other American intelligence agencies. And you picture a 21-year-old working at night, probably off, very often all alone in a room, bored as hell and being like wonder what's popping off in the world i have 
I have the access to this. Let me check it out. And that anyway. when I, we always talk about like how the fuck would you know? Like when we talk about global war and inner theater conflicts, we're all like, how would you know, man? You're an E6. You're a fucking O three O four. How would you have any idea? And then we find out a story that a reservist E3 has access to essentially all the world's secrets at one yeah. time. And he's a reservist. That's yeah, right. That's... A 21 year old E3 reservist had access to the U.S. world secrets. So in his free time, though, this Teixeira guy was a big gamer, like big, big video gamer. And during the pandemic, he created a private invite only discord group chat with about 25 guys in it of similar interests and it was I called I bet they're Thug all having lots of sex like those guys tons of sex it. yeah um it was called <laughs> Thug Shaker Central and if you look it up Thug Shaker is a meme uh, about a black man it's a little racist okay yeah. uh, and besides gaming just guys being dudes in this discord chat connecting during the pandemic talking about gaming but they'd also talk about orthodox catholicism As guns one does. Yeah, just fellas hanging out talking about Orthodox Catholicism. <laughs> yeah. um, guns, conspiracy the theories, anti-Semitism, and they would share apparently like horrifically racist memes. I need to know how Orthodox Catholicism got into that rotation. He was very Catholic. Fit. He was like very oh. super duper, and there's certain branches of every religion that take it yeah. a little too far, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, to give you a little more idea of what this guy is like, there's a video of Teixeira where he's at a shooting range and he's yelling racial and anti-Semitic slurs into the camera before he fires several rounds into a target. And so this is the kind of guy who has access to the U.S. world secrets at age 21. And a guy who has access to the U.S. military. Like, just not right, just right. selling secrets. <clears throat> that should probably be a disqualifier, in my opinion. Mm. Anyways, according to some of the gamers who belonged to this Discord group, he also liked to lecture the group because he was he called himself OG. He was, Love like, it. anonymous on there and used uh, an avatar that wasn't him. But he liked to like lord over these guys and he would go on these big discussions about Ukraine and conflicts around the globes. They said sometimes you can see when someone's typing, he would be typing for half an hour at a time to Jeez. share what he was learning from this classified intelligence work. And one group member told the New York Times that the briefings were largely ignored by the group. Like they were like, dude, we're just trying to game or be racist right now. We don't care about this 30 minute diet. <laughs> They're all hitting them up with that meme, like, sorry that happened or congratulations. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I ain't reading all that. <laughs> yeah. So he was getting annoyed by this. He's like, you guys need to care about this stuff, blah, blah, blah. Like I have access to all this info. None of you care. And so in frustration, instead of just doing these 30 minute, like him interpreting the secret stuff he was seeing, he started dropping photos of the actual classified materials. And and it wasn't like he was like uploading them or whatever. He was getting printouts of these classified documents and then photographing them at home and then uploading those photographs to the Discord group, which we'll talk about how that got him caught later on. Um, but um, those materials were later shared. So, and he said, it was just for the group, just for their private group, not meant to go yeah. anywhere else. Like it was, people are treating him like he's some hero who who spread this is like whatever. He never wanted this info out. And by people, you mean Congress people? Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene, so <laughs> right? Yeah. Anyway, okay. Um, those materials, though, of course, once you know you share something in a group, it's going to spread. And a couple people, Bellingcat, these investigative reporters at, at Bellingcat did an incredible job of tracking the exact path of once loose lips sink ships, once one document got out to this site and then it made it to this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. And like next how thing COVID you know, spread. and next thing you know, these documents are on Twitter and the department of defense is like, uh, oh. anyway, <laughs> this recruit found some materials <laughs> on the, uh. anyway, um, <laughs> This finally makes it to the attention of federal authorities who arrest him at gunpoint at his mama's house. Again, his friend said he did not intend for the documents to spread beyond their chat. Um, and as for figuring out exactly who the guy was leaking these things, investigators at the New York Times were able to use, so his Discord had links to other social media accounts. And so they followed this trail and on his, I think it was his sister's Instagram, she had a photo of the family in the kitchen and they're like, that countertop looks just like the countertop that those docs were being photographed on. Can't and they get away with you. shit, Con. Dude. Can't get listen, away with shit. Listen, yeah. I was just going to say, this is the type of stuff that Alex does. The mm -hmm. information she's able to deduce from social media and the internet is impressive. She can oh, it's easily incredible. go work for the CIA today with her capabilities. And it's unbelievable 
you cannot get away with crimes these days because I promise you, you will not cover up every single track. The entirety of the cyber like Intel group should be all women. Yes, I mean Dude. across the board, a hundred percent women that are looking into like cyber crimes because they will find it, man. Like when no my doubt cousins were like, "We think your ex before I was divorced took this woman to Aruba, or took this woman to a tropical vacation." We had one little snippet of photo for evidence. We found the exact doc those motherfuckers were on in Aruba. Like, we yeah, like, dude, it's fucking it's crazy, crazy. Man. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? The who found Osama bin Laden? A woman. That's yeah. right. put us on the case. Anyway, yep. so I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was lady investigators who found this. It got Without anyway, question, it was. Anyway, um, as for what those documents contain. Oh, also his Discord chat. He signed up for it using his own real name and credit card information. <laughs> so you were gonna get caught, buddy. You were gonna get caught. As for some what hero. Those, why this is a big deal, the leaked documents included the whereabouts and movements of high-ranking political leaders and tactical updates on military forces, along with geopolitical analysis and insights into foreign governments' efforts to interfere with elections. And this is, too, what, what was unique about this. Like, a lot of, like, Snowden and some of these other docs, when they were released, all the info was kind of older at that mm-hmm. point. Like, yeah. Very, very it little really of it anything. was accurate. Yeah. Some of these documents, they said, were as recent as like 40-something days. And so this is information that could people say, well, all these older leaked documents that could get people killed. Well, they weren't timely. And like, sure, it could put people in danger, but they weren't so timely. This is the kind of stuff where like Russia could figure out where their mole is kind Mm -hmm. of thing. And like, this is the kind of info that was timely enough that could put people in actual danger kind of thing. And not just Um, their people, our people too, who are our people too. Yeah. Right. And they revealed how the U S gathers foreign intelligence, not just on Russia's military and spy agencies, but also partners like Ukraine and Israel, in addition to key allies such as Asia and South Korea. So our own friends are like, what the fuck you guys, what are you doing watching us like this? And what, you know, all our every moves, even though they do it to us too, but whatever. And this, Next um, point makes me sad because I never like to agree with old ladybugs. What do we got here, Kate? <laughs> That's what yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> well, also, too, I want to say really quick, some of the documents were so specific, they shared the exact date that Ukraine was to run out of air defense missiles and stuff like that. So if Russia knew this info, it could really help them with their spring offensive. Like, mm-hmm. there was some big deal info. Anyway, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham questioned why low-ranking Teixeira had access to the information and demanded people lose their jobs over the security failure. Completely and, agree with Lindsey Graham. Yeah. Yes. thousand percent. He said, yeah. I am stunned. Please don't clip that, that Nick. Yeah, I am stunned that somebody at that level could have so much access. And you're right, like, where are the safe, like, if you think it's just him staying up late looking into all this shit that they shouldn't and showing off to their buddies or their if girlfriends or to impress somebody. hundreds of others do, right? Because here's Dude. the thing, too, I think he, maybe, maybe this kid is really smart and that's how they were able to determine nah, he used that. his real name. Well, no, 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 let me finish. Like, to maybe have a job in Intel, maybe, he, like, you're really smart, but at the same time, you're still working with a 21 year old brain and you're still working with the ability to make choices with that 21 year old brain. He didn't think three steps ahead or even one step ahead that what he was leaking could potentially get outside that chat. He it never could, it came to that. Conclusion. Put him in prison for the rest of his life. Yes. Yes. But also too, like look at the background checks we had to go through to get our top secret clearances, like our secret clearances, whatever it was that we had. And I feel like for somebody who's that racist and shitty and is posting videos about it and blah, 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 like his command probably should have figured like, do your research. If this person has that much access, do your research on who has that much access and figure like figure out these reporters for these big newspapers didn't have to look that hard to find that shit. Like mm-hmm. that he's a not great no. guy. Right. So anyway, um, then on the other end, you have Marjorie Taylor Greene. And that whole group, I had, we posted about this on the Zero Block 30 Instagram and immediately people were like, fuck you, he's a hero, this guy's a hero. And I'm like, what? Okay, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, so she writes on Twitter, Jack Teixeira is white, male, Christian, and anti-war. That makes him an enemy to the Biden regime. And he told the truth about troops being on the ground in Ukraine and a lot more. Ask yourself, who's the real enemy? A young, low-level National Guardsman? Yes. Um, and by the way, that was a big sticking <laughs> point too. One of the documents revealed that we have 14 special forces troops on the ground, like in Kiev, doing logistical work 
for whatever. And part of me is like, sure, Jan. Like, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure it's I'm way sure, more than that. Sure, it's way more than that. I'm sure they're doing way more than the legit. Like, you're right. I'm sure we're being lied to, man. I'm, I'm absolutely. Yeah, more than 14 people in every country on the planet. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so I do think, like, but do I think this kid is noble in any way? And what he no. did was good? No. no. I think the leap that you have to take to tie this in any way to being an enemy to the Biden regime, like the leap that she made, get a parachute because you're going to fall out of that plane that you have to fly in to make that big of a leap. Also, to and I mean, a ton, just for a hero. minute, touch some grass. A yes. ton of other Republicans are coming forward as well on both sides of the fence saying like, this is a bad thing that happened. Like, this isn't good. Right. Um, another interesting note, as we said, the investigation that led to Teixeira's arrest came after these documents were starting to get shared across social media. And one of the sites associated with these leaks was ru- helped run by a gal by the name of Donbass Dufushka. Okay. What kind of name is that? Sorry, I'm just Donbass Dufushka. It's she had like a sexy like hidden lady avatar oh, and yeah, she, I did she's that. like a Russian operative mm-hmm. like mysterious. Oh. Well, it turns out that that the Donbass Dufushka hottie lady. What is Dufushka? That- I bet it means something the city or the province or whatever the fuck it's called of doom doom bus like destroyer like don bus destroyer i don't know yeah. anyway she was running this pro-russian social media account that was sharing some of those leaked documents and guess who she turned out to be sarah bills a former u.s navy officer from new jersey honestly <laughs> okay. glow up of a name though to go from sarah yeah. bills to the dumb bus davishka or whatever that's pretty sick which is probably <laughs> part of the allure to her for why she did it she was somebody it was sexy it was a cool right. thing when really big old nerd a former u.s enlisted aviation electronics technician she had been posting online as a russian blogger a sexy russian blogger when not the case uh, that's what i should s- transition to i should become a, a nice a sexy, sexy russian blogger a flirty little a flirty little russian blogger Yeah, she ran several social media accounts, which is where she reportedly shared files that included at least four classified U.S. intel documents about the war in Ukraine. What a tangled war war we Let me tell you something, though. I'm not condoning. Let me say this. I'm not condoning leaking documents, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. But how great is the feeling when you have a secret Uh, that no one else knows uh, and you get to share that with someone? Yep. Yep. Come on. Uh-huh. Oh, yep. that's a high like no other. Oh, yep. big time. When I when the digital Dunkirk stuff was happening and people were giving me intel, I felt like the bell of the ball. Like it was a terrible situation, but have an inside scoop. Adam Scheffler must feel like an yes. absolute monster of a human. Yes. Being. But yes. it's also a good reminder that like nothing stays secret, dude. Yeah. Like that, it's so hard to keep a fucking secret, which is which this is proof of it. I could Anyway, do it. I'd be telling everybody too. Anyway, let's move on from the Air National Guard. Wait a minute. No. We've got another guy, another. And both of these, Jack Teixeira, Airman Jack Teixeira, one of the main photos circulating of him on social media is the classic in uniform mirror selfie with his one little ribbon. And this next Air National Guardman, the only social media photo they have for him for the newspaper reports, same thing. Mirror selfie, one little ribbon, just looking like an absolute dork. His uniform anyway. ill-fitting, like his tie doesn't go all the way up to his neck. I his, hate yeah. that. That's one of my pet peeves. <laughs> his undershirt is like coming out of his sleeves big time. Yeah. He looks like an absolute soup sandwich. Yeah, so this soup sandwich is Air National Guardman Josiah, er, Josiah Ernesto Garcia, age 21, of Tennessee. Um, he was arrested and charged Thursday with applying to be a hitman. But what he didn't realize was that it was a parody website. This is it wasn't just, real. It's just so perfect, man. He this... came across, hear me out. <laughs> he came across the website www.rentahitman.com. As he was I, I don't think you rent one. I think that's you buy it. Like you don't mm. you don't rent a hitman. Like you that's a purchase. And if it's that easy to find, uh, that's probably not the most secretive and best. Anyway, he was searching for He should have went to beahitmanandgetawaywithit.com. He should have. He went the wrong way. Mm-hmm. He was searching for contract mercenary jobs to support his family. But hey, he that's drive, noble drive to support an Uber. your family. Yeah. Drive an Uber, dude. dude. <laughs> Do Uber Eats, man. Get a job yeah. waiting tables. Do start start else. selling shit on Etsy. Learn to knit. Yeah. Anyway, the website was... The website was created in 2005 to advertise a cybersecurity startup, and that's why it was called rentahitman.com. Like, this person was saying, like, I'll try and 
like see how secure your own website is. Like I'm like a hitman for websites. Which is a good idea. Else. He's like, I'll show you your insecurities, like the weaknesses you have on your own thing. Like I'll try mm-hmm. and be a hitman for it. Um, but when that failed, he started to get inquiries for hitman services. So this guy was like, man, I'm getting inquiries, people looking for an actual hitman, not cybersecurity services. So the administrator converted it to a parody site and he included false testimonials from people who claimed to have used his services. Like they killed my husband, Gary. They were so professional. They were great. <laughs> Thank you. Rent a hitman.com. Four and a half stars. Would recommend. Garcia sees this and he sees these murder reviews, these four star (laughs) murder reviews. He's like, this is for me. I want to be this. So he applies on the website to work as a hitman in February. He submitted his ID documents, a resume. My and, God, dude. and indicated that he was an expert marksman, earning him the nickname Reaper. Oh. And was, was employed with the Air National oh, Guard golly. since 2021. Yeah. Mm. Garcia continued to follow up on the website for about a month, submitting even more identification, including his home address, a headshot, and eventually agreed to kill Different someone. Different type for, of headshot than he usually gives out, folks. Right, exactly. Uh, and eventually agreed to kill someone for five thousand dollars. Because so at this point, the guy who runs the website is like, people usually figure it out pretty quick. But excuse me, FBI, this guy won't let up, and he really wants to be a hitman. Maybe <laughs> you should look into him because I'm troubled by this guy. I, now. So the other day, I was on the VA website, and you know, I'm applying for a house, so you got to supply the DD two fourteen to use your VA stuff. And there's a new site where you could download a new portion where you could download your entire service record book. Like yeah. The initial entry documentations, all that stuff. I need access to this guy's full record book because I there has to be an ASVAB waiver. Has to be. <laughs> and there just has to be. Mm-hmm. Well, so the FBI takes over the conversation between the, this Rent a Hitman website and Garcia. And. They convince him to kill, well, they don't convince him. He agrees to kill someone for $5,000 in a conversation with an undercover agent. On Wednesday, Garcia met the undercover agents at a park in Hendersonville, Tennessee, and was provided with a target packet of a fictional individual, which included, and I bet Garcia never felt cooler in his whole life, oh meeting God, in the park, yeah. getting the packet. Um, he got the target for me packet. one time, Garcia, just once. I know. It included photographs and other info about the individual to be killed, a down payment of $2,500, and after agreeing to the terms of the murder arrangement, Garcia asked the agent if he needed to provide a photo of the dead body. Garcia was then arrested by the agent, who, in a subsequent search of his home, found an AR-style rifle. Reaper faces up to 10 years in the clink, folks. That's, uh... I'm just that... picturing this kid in a dark bar, you know, puffing on a cig. Yeah. The girl walks up to him, and they're like, ah, oh, they call me the Reaper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're it. getting it. If better, your better walk the Reaper, away. you're getting it. <laughs> so shout out to the PR folks over at Hair <laughs> National Guard. They're just going through the ringer. Oh, man. This oh, month. Man. Yeah. Reaper. Do you think, going back to the initial story of the leak, who do you think should be relieved? for that somebody right or is it just another thing of a young enlisted person doing young enlisted person thing there's got to be somebody who's in charge of the information in that facility right I yeah he's not ultimately the the he's not ultimately the person who's in charge of it there's somebody above him right so i think what they need to do and what they're probably going to do is a review and an overhaul across the board what they should do of or say they will security clearances right and a complete overhaul of the safeguards to, like, just because we all have the same level of access, does that mean we should all have access to everything? Or just maybe what pertains to our particular little workspace? Like, you but know, I think it needs to do that entire. after Snowden. Like, after that mm-hmm. happened, they were supposed to well, do a complete... I don't know if you could ever yeah. control that much information. Because what are they going to do? I mean, you had that much information. I do think... It sucks to say that Lindsey Graham is absolutely right, but he's 100% right. How can an E3, no matter what, active duty, you got reduced down from fucking E7 to E3, an E3 should never have access. I I don't think anybody, E6 shouldn't have it, an E04 no. shouldn't have Like, you have to be, in order to get that, like a command sergeant major or like a uh, a flag officer like you can't be some low I, level i think you're person. underestimating though the higher level you are though too the higher level your lifestyle is and the greeter you're you might be able to get and we've seen cases too of like the gs18 
and yeah. his wife selling secrets to the Russians for to like China, money. yeah, for the that fighter pilot. They, I don't they think went it matters to China so and trained much. Them. Yeah, I think people around like any time, like we had a creep in our unit, and like everybody kind of knew. Keep an eye out. This guy's a creep. What's like, his name? I, his I, name? All I know, I called him the catfish because he had a real wiggly little mustache. Okay. Oh, Anyways, yeah, I, know. Um, I know that guy. But like everybody kind of sniffs out. Like I'm sure some, because they interviewed people from his life and they were like, yeah, no, we're not surprised by this. Like to share it. Like people from his life were like, yeah, I'm not really that shocked to hear this. Like, Listen, people know. You're not knows. supposed to mm-hmm. judge a book by its cover, but sometimes you got to judge a book by its cover and you just look at these kids. And you're like, you know what? Don't give them access but to also, all these top level secrets. Also, you know what the toughest part of that is, though? All IT people are weird, man. Yeah. They're all fucking weird. They no are. offense. What is Send that? Love. Did it say, Kate, what the Hitman's MOS was? Did he say that? No, no. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's not going to be anything that's an expert rifle. I guarantee you that. No, no. <laughs> so. nothing, that, nothing that warrants the name Reaper, that's yeah, for sure. Nothing. I might give myself that nickname, Uncle Chap the Reaper. I love that shit. The Reaper. All right, yeah. let's move on to some good initiative, bad judgment with both of those people. Do not nope. qualify for Wait. That would be bad initiative, nope. bad judgment. Just really quick, a quick round two. Today's show is also brought to you by our friend at Factor. This spring, you need nutritious, convenient meals to energize you for warmer, active days and keep you on track for reaching your goals. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit and can help you fuel up fast at ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll have time to save, eat well, and tackle everything on your to-do list. Too busy to cook this spring? With Factor, skip to the trip to the grocery store and skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready to go in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and dry, enjoy. Then get back to outside and soak up some more of that warm weather looking for calorie conscious option this spring try the delicious dietitian approved calorie smart meal with around or less than 550 calories per serving they offer delicious flavor packed options on the menu every week to fit your variety of lifestyles from keto to calorie smart to vegan and veggie and protein plus they're prepared by chefs and approved by dietitian each meal has all the ingredients that you need to feel satisfied all day while meeting your goals with 34 chef prepared dietitian approved weekly options there's always something new to try plus you can round out your meal and replenish your stack supply with an assortment of 45 different plus 45 plus add-ons including breakfast items like egg bites smoothie and so much more want to cut back on your takeout get factor instead not only is factor cheaper than takeout but meals are ready and faster than restaurant delivery they get there in just two minutes head to factormeals.com slash blog 50 and use the code blog 50 to get 50 percent off your first box that's code blog50 at factormeals.com slash blog50 to get 50% off your first box. So, there's been so oh, yeah. much go- <laughs> There's been so much going on. Like there's always special forces drama. Like they're murdering each other and getting into all kinds of trouble, man. There's like some crazy shit. Now given goes without saying, most very noble, incredible people, glad we have them. Thank yeah. God. But also there seems to be some major lack of like leadership oversight going on because it's creating problems for them. This image they're developing for themselves is like a fucking mess, dude. But it's that old adage, the old military adage, there's always that 10% because 90%, yeah. 95% of the people in the special forces community, the Naval Special Warfare groups, they don't do this kind of shit. But right. The 10% they they that are the do. quiet professionals. Right. Right. Anyway, so Navy SEAL. Chief Eddie Gallagher released a nearly 12 minute video shitting on Representative Dan Crenshaw. And Dan Crenshaw was what? Uh, He was a SEAL as well. He was a SEAL as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you got one SEAL. And remember, Eddie Gallagher is the war crimes guy. I just read that story again about the, I know he got acquitted and Trump pardoned him or whatever, but like those guys that all came forward and their testimony and they have it. They took all their private text messages and emails where they're saying, remember, nobody lie, nobody embellish, just tell the truth, and that's all we can do. And they told the truth. Like, Eddie Gallagher's a piece of shit. I'll go to my grave feeling comfortable Mm -hmm. and fine saying that. Bad human being. No matter how many times they come at your Instagram. uh, Yeah, they they still do from time to time. I'm okay with that. I'm okay (laughs) with that. Also, anyway, he releases a 12-minute video shitting on other SEAL, Dan Crenshaw. Really quickly? 
I got through about 90 seconds. Dude, like, so oh, did I. Okay. I. I couldn't watch it. I, Sorry. I, like, I tried fast forwarding through it. The same thing with it. Goggins and Crenshaw. I tried to do the same thing. I was like, there's, there's just nothing I care about less than two seals arguing about who did more in combat. Like, who yes. gives a fuck? Is that what it was I, about? Yeah, a dude, lot of I, like, it, yeah. I fast forwarded oh, wow. through little bits and pieces of it, and it was like... Is like him jerking himself off and and also being like after what me and my family went through after I killed those people and I'm yeah. like he just, I'm just like oh my god shut the fuck up you're the worst he's just the like grittiest. Crenshaw was talking about how Goggins and yeah. Eddie Gallagher are just like doing it for attention and they want to be like podcasters and be social influencers and then you have the other side that are like we're not doing that we're telling how it really is what's really going on and cringe oh, is using all this navy seal stuff to his political advantage to go forward in his career you're making the same arguments folks like you're both yeah. doing it I the same not, thing. Not, not to come into like too much defense of crenshaw but i don't feel like or maybe he does i just don't pay that close attention to the guy does he really bring up his service all that often I yes. don't pay that much attention to him. Yeah, he does? I, think it, okay. I'll, I will tell you this much, though. I picked two politicians to start tracking their stocks, and I do what they do, and I'm making money. Pelosi and Crenshaw, buddies. Let me tell oh, you yeah. something. They've made me $56. Oh, let me tell you. <laughs> in the last... There's entire Those accounts two. that, that Mama's follow gonna Nancy have an Uber Eats meal paid for. Mm. Yeah, Crenshaw and uh, Pelosi. Those two may have more in common than you think. What were you saying, Anyways... Cars? What did you um, say? No, I think. Uh, go ahead, Kate. I don't. I don't remember. Sorry. Anyway, cool. I guess the heart of the beef. <laughs> I guess the heart of the beef is that apparently Dan Crenshaw was like, "Hey, Eddie Gallagher, I'm gonna help you out of this mess," and was telling Eddie Gallagher he was gonna help him, but then turned around to his fellow Congress members and quietly was like, "No, no, don't help this guy. He's not a good guy." And so then Eddie Gallagher found out through the grapevine, and those two are just beefing it up. Um, somebody explained, I said someone on Twitter, I was like, someone explained this drama to me like I'm five. And this guy, B. Ray, said, Eddie got in trouble during recess, and the teacher was going to put him <laughs> in detention for the rest of the school year. His friend Dan said that he could help Eddie get out of detention, but went to the teacher and told her to keep Eddie in detention forever. That's, that's it. Pretty, I like yeah. that. That's it up. That's a good yeah. So yeah, thank you. I don't know. Anyway, if you just want to watch a shit show unfold, go watch the videos. They're just... To me, it's embarrassing. You're just all embarrassing yourselves. Yeah, is and I think my vibe. this reeks... That there's like a twinge of jealousy here, too, because like seemingly like, you know, I, I think there's a lot of people in the special forces and the military in general who, you know, obviously go from the military and have a life after the military and seemingly going from the military and being an elected official is a pretty good next step. So I think Eddie Gallagher is trying to pick up the piece of his pieces of his life. And he's realizing, I think he's just jealous that he's not going to get to do the same uh, path forward that so many other guys got to do because of the mess that he got himself embroiled in. Yeah. I thousand percent disagree. He is filthy rich because of the yeah, things I think that he he's, did. I think like he's the realized. And like all the different oh, endorsements okay. and shit like that. I think, I think he's, he's filthy realized, rich like, because of it. I doing stuff like though. this. Well, that's why he does stuff like this, Cons, I think. is because it keeps, it gets people angry again. And yeah. it, he's got to have an enemy and someone to direct his people towards. And like, I feel like that's what gives him but I'm power. telling you, I think eventually I that runs out. People are going to be like, oh, Eddie Gallagher's talking again about that thing that happened 20 years ago. Nobody cares. Like eventually I yeah. think it, it very well, ch Chaps might be true that he's made a lot of money off of this, but I think ultimately that will run out. I Unless he starts investing like Crenshaw and then who knows. True. There's sane... Uh, special forces guys that I follow and just I go off what they're saying which is just like oh come on guys stop it so that's the vibe that I'm getting yeah. so like Jack anyway, Murphy you're like yeah you're yeah. making us look bad you're embarrassing yeah. me so yeah. Jack, Jack, yeah that's you know what uh, you know he's a friend of the podcast follow Jack Murphy if you want a good barometer of like what's going on in the special forces community all the time yeah. I think Jack's a pretty good barometer and uh, yeah. can sniff out the BS no doubt anyway, about it's fun it. to watch so from afar Let's move on to some good initiative, bad judgment. And the first one is a point that you could probably make if you don't want to be a hitman. Like, and that's the first one up. There was a congressman this week, a Republican lawmaker, who said that service members should have their pay bumped because right now he did yes. the math. And if you work a 40-hour week based on your entry level of education, your entry level of service, it comes out to you're making the equivalent of of $15 an hour while you're in the military, and he wants to boost that up to a, a livable wage, which I think makes perfect sense, right? And yes, Absolutely. and I think 
they were saying one of the reasons that enlistments are low, like the job market is actually doing pretty well right now. And why the fuck would I join the military for 15 bucks an hour when I can work at McDonald's for a better, for a better my pay? Kid, when my I can kid work works at Starbucks. fast food for $17 an hour. Right yeah, now. and okay. I can work at Starbucks and get like legit good benefit. Like, why am I gonna go to the military? And I think too, like that pay is so low. The news is out there that the food insecurity amongst lower enlisted, they're on food stamps, man. Yeah, food like, insecurity are I... getting less pay. The people are killing themselves left and right. Like there's sexual assault that's constantly in the news. And another one happened this week. Another, essentially a murder happened at Fort Hood again. Like there's all kinds of negative news. The way that the political landscape of how people view the military. Is it too woke? Is it all these different things? But pay is a huge part of it, man. Like if you don't have Dude, I money, think if you pay enough, all that shit goes away. People don't care. All of it. I, That's the reason why I, they throw out enlistment bonus. Because no matter, right. during the surge, people are looking on the news and being like, you know what? That Fallujah shit, that seems pretty bad. And then the Marines were like, yeah, but we'll give you fucking 18 grand if you sign up. People are like, yeah, that Fallujah yeah. actually doesn't seem I think that bad. Raising the pay to get rid of a lot of the trouble. So. And like, uh, I'd say theory, good initiative, good judgment. I agree. Yeah, good initiative, good judgment. And in theory, it should be easy to do. In theory. Yeah, in theory. All right, yeah. number two. So that one's bad initiative or good initiative, good judgment. Next up from New Delhi, an Indian couple has allegedly died by suicide by using a guillotine-like mechanism to decapitate themselves in a sacrificial ritual, police said on Sunday. Um, a guy was 38 and his wife, 35, both died by decapitation using the homemade blade mechanism in a hut on their farm in the western state of Gujarat. Uh, the couple first prepared a fire also before putting their heads under a guillotine and the, then their heads fell into a fire. Good initiative, bad judgment. I think it's bad initiative, chaps. I think it's bad initiative and bad judgment. I would uh, agree. <clears throat> yeah, uh, but ingenuitive to have your heads roll into the fire. Yeah, I thought that yeah. that's well planned out. That's like one of those things where, uh, Rube, what is it called? The Rube Bears machine? Rube Goldberg. Yeah, Rube Goldberg? Rube Goldberg. Yeah. 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 That, then their heads set off dominoes. And... Anyway, uh, bad initiative, bad judgment. That said... You got to give them a little credit for building a working guillotine, though. Yeah, and if you're going to die, I feel like guillotine's pretty good way. Like, yeah, you, quick, quick. Quick. You don't feel anything. It's just donezo. Yeah, you don't see it coming either. It's not like if... All right, I don't actually... I don't want to finish that sentence. That's too dark. Never mind. I sorry. think Kate just went to go puke. That's what my guess is. Did you go throw up? <laughs> throw no, up? I'm okay. I'm okay. 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 All right. All right. <laughs> I let my cat out. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, a 50-year-old Spanish extreme athlete emerged on Friday after spending 500 days in a challenge living 70 meters underneath the cave outside of Granada with minimal contact on the outside. She was wearing dark glasses and smiling as she adjusted to the light of spring in southern Spain. She's an elite mountaineer, Beatrice Flamini. Um, yeah, Flamini? told reporters that she had that time had flown and she didn't want to come out. When they came to get me, I was asleep. I thought something had happened. I said, already? Surely not. I hadn't even finished my book yet. So she spent two years, two birthdays underground, essentially, and she, di she didn't know that there was a war in Ukraine. She didn't know that the end of Spain's COVID mask requirement was done or that Queen Elizabeth had died. Good initiative, bad judgment doing that. Yeah, and the, I was reading a part where she was talking about at one point during this time, there was an infestation of some certain kind of fly mm -hmm. that for like eight days, she's in this dark cave just covered in flies and it wasn't sanitary and she could barely move. Like, And she was like, and you know, you just keep whatever. She had an exercise routine down there. She said she like loved it. Uh, crazy. Listen, I think there's a lot of people in this world who would like to just disappear for a little while. So I'll say this was good initiative, bad judgment. I don't know that 500 days was necessary, but yeah. just kind of removing yourself and, and, you know, doing the Aaron Rodgers darkness retreat type thing. I think that's not a terrible idea. Um, and also I think it's good to kind of, and go ahead, call me a hardo or whatever. Sometimes I like to just do things to challenge myself to see if I can do them. Yeah. Like one time I walked from Hoboken to the George Washington Bridge and back because I had time to do Wanted that. Wanted to know. Yeah. I just, just want to be able like to say, walking. like, I did it. Yeah, I just felt like walking. <laughs> no, I get so, it. I get I stuff get like it. that. Yeah, I get mm -hmm. it too. That being said, one other little tidbit about this lady. I don't think we can count 500 days, folks. She came out eight times so they could come in and check her sanitary conditions and living uh, conditions. that doesn't count. And stayed in a tent 
outside. No, so she came out counts. once. She came out one time for eight days when there was an issue underground, but she didn't have any communication with anyone when she did it. And I still don't still, think it counts. If you come okay. out, I think it. That puts uh, a pause. Okay. It, no, it, it resets the counter. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's some pussy yeah. shit. You come out for eight days. Why? If you, I mean, why even go back in? You're already out. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. The All morals right. to give up. <laughs> and the last one. In Eugene, Oregon, after a man threw thousands of dollars in cash out the window of his car on Interstate 5 on Tuesday night, several random bystanders are experiencing a sudden windfall. Why family members of the man said that their bank accounts were totally empty for his stunt. According oh. to the Oregon State Police, troopers responded after hearing a report of money being thrown out of a window. Colin Davis McCarthy, who was the cash Santa, who allegedly told them he was doing well enough and wanted to share the gift of money with others. So instead of giving it to an actual charitable organization, he just tossed that shit straight up out the window and his family onto no a longer, highway. Onto a highway, and it was $200,000 $200, in cash, and he took it out, all of his family members, and now they are broke as a joke. I, honest to God, believe if your family member threw two hundred grand of yours out on, the, out on the street and you're broke, you should be able to fly them to India and use that guillotine. No doubt about it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I won't, I won't dispute you there. I think this is good initiative, bad judgment. Wanting to give to others is excellent, and yeah. it's a great feeling. Uh, but to do so at the sacrifice peril. of your yeah. – Yeah, the peril. That was the word I was looking for. Thanks. Of your family members' bank accounts, not so great. Well, this is crazy. The Oregon State Police spoke with his family, and the family was like, yeah, this is pretty normal behavior for him. Uh, except he took all of our money from shared accounts, so we're penniless now. And so it's like, yeah, that's Tom for that's you, but he really did screw us over, didn't he? If, that, uh, if that's yeah. normal for you, I don't think you could have him as a joint holder of your bank account. No, I feel you like that. Yeah, he probably off. shouldn't have access to those bank accounts. Maybe just the checking account, so he can do some of his basic checking needs. But the savings account, we got to keep him out of there, folks. Mm. That's not good. I have a question for cons. It's a financial question before we get into save rounds and alibis. Yes. Jalen Hurts, the quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, Eagles, good for him. Logo. Got that bag. Yep. He got $189.6 million, something like that, guaranteed. Federal banks only insure up to $200,000, $250,000, depending on which one. Where the fuck do you keep $187 million where it's, like, insured? Um, Offshore, so- Switzerland? Well, wow. I mean, there's there are ways to do it in that regard, yeah. But there are certain special bank accounts that, like banks like J.P. Morgan, have for very high wealth individuals, um, where they will I- insure it still. Because this ain't like <laughs> stocks, you know. Like Elon Musk, the richest yeah. person in the world, their second richest person in the world, he has like 140 billion dollars. But that shit ain't cash. Like you know, no. that's not cash money. That's all in stocks and investments and all that stuff. Jalen Hurts is $179 million. He's going to get, I think it was $125 million by the end of next year. That's cash money that's in his bank account. Where the fuck do you yeah, keep it, man? That he can use right yeah. away. Liquid. That's just uh, that's just crazy to me. To, to have that much money all at once come into your bank account. And haggling. Can you imagine being <laughs> trusting yourself how much you're worth? Where you're like, because you know they started it like had to start like two ten or something like that. Where if you get negotiated down, um, like imagine I, I, going in there and yeah. be like, I need two hundred million dollars for me to do my job. Two hundred yeah, I mean, million in four I actually, years. I should actually. Uh, my brother in law um, was a sports agent for a while before he started his company that he runs right now. I'd be interested to see how that even works. I have to suspect that. They take what the other quarterbacks are getting, like the Mahomeses of the world. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they start at a reasonable number, but then you come to the table, you're like, 255. Like, that's just, I don't know. Where does it end, right? At, at what point does, does 255 million get dollars a year, man. That's so crazy. It's, nuts. it's just it's nuts. crazy. All right, and let's he move didn't on. Even win the Super Bowl. No, Not but he got him there. And he's real good. Yeah. He's different from oh, anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I have a quick Absolutely. question before we go to yeah. save rounds. Is the Navy SEALs, I, I consider them special forces. Yeah, they are. Yes. Yes. I mean, Naval Special Warfare is their name. Yeah, yeah, Okay. I said, because in my tweet, I said, I'm getting wrapped up right now. Someone explained the Eddie Gallagher, Dan Crenshaw special forces beef to me like I'm five. And this guy, Ryan, said, well, neither are special forces, so you should probably figure that part out first. And I was like, <laughs> okay, bitch, Ryan. Okay, bitch, Ryan. it's the Navy Special hey, Operations hey. Force, so I'm saying special forces. 
And AK you know what people, it's the same shit with an AR. Like, no, it doesn't mean assault rifle. You know what the fuck people mean. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what people mean. Yeah, like, Kate, stop haggling over, lives. like, the little terms. Special I'm forces. I'm gonna go stuff him in a locker. Who cares? That's where he belongs. Who cares? Yeah. Oh, so all you just replied. Here we go. So you call dudes in the Air Force Marines? Special forces are an army unit. Everyone else is special forces or SOF. Okay, so the special operator. I mean, fucking semantics. Same thing, man. We know what we're talking about. You same know? thing, same thing. All right, let's we're move on to save school. rounds and alibis. All right, let's move into some save rounds and alibis. Today, Connor, we will start with you. All right, everybody. Um, a few quick things. Uh, two quick things, and then I have a question that I think bears mentioning. All right, number one. Shout to the dude on Twitter. I'm not even going to say his handle because I don't really remember it. But recently he just keeps tweeting at me that I dress like a mailman. I don't even know what that means, but he's consistent with it. So shout to you, fella. I guess I dress like a mailman. Not really. My sure. mailman's anyway. like a middle-aged Hispanic dude with like a ponytail. Like, yeah. do they have a, a I don't know. set look? I, I don't know. But apparently I dress like a mailman. If you go back and look at my Twitter, he like tweets gifts at me at like different things, different people as mailmen. Oh. Um, the most recent one being the Jerry Seinfeld mailman gift. Anyway, you know um, when I went through my divorce crisis, I applied to be a mail lady. You'd have you been great be at great. that. Mm-hmm. I yeah. love walking around. I love it. I would have been an on foot in a city yeah. somewhere with my little. Oh, I would have. You're right. I, I would have. You'd be friends be with everybody in the neighborhood. The you guys know Kate would be walking up, boop, 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 doing her little walk over. I'd have a yeah. cigarette in my mouth, <laughs> dangling out of my mouth. Yeah. yeah, telling us about all the different routes she's been taking. I would love it. Maybe in mm-hmm. another life. A mm-hmm. podcast about postal service would kill. Like all the different things that you see, like whenever you were a UPS woman. Yeah. Oh, man. I could have I could have written a novel, and I only did that for a couple months. Also, remember, we had that fan who was a mailman who used to call us all the time from his yeah. route. Kate Mannion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, there was two. We had one, yeah. a guy in Ohio and, and the other me up yeah. north. That's right. Another I was. Catherine, I am. Catherine Mannion. Yep. There is. Same name as me, and she's a mail lady, and so I guess I am living it. And also huh. horny. She's a very horny person. True. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I don't know if either of you are. I, I would think. I think Chaps might be. Uh, but I don't know if folks are Jason Isbell fans. But I just recently watched the documentary on HBO Max about him. Had no idea about the guy's life really, other than his music. Really fascinating. Gives a lot of intro uh, inspection uh, or uh, a look inside his music. I recommend that. And then lastly. I've been sitting on this one for a while because I drive whenever, and this comes to mind anytime I drive Alex to her office. Who do you think has more things named after them? Washington or JFK? Washington. Yeah, I would say Washington. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah big dude. time. Where, what, both sides JFK Airport? What is there? Oh, my God. Uh, no, I'm talking like JFK Boulevard. I'm talking about, uh, like, all, like, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about major things. I'm talking about, like, everything. Streets, schools. Like, how I'd many JFK Wash- schools? I'd say Washington. Washington in a landslide. Like, not yeah, a I'd landslide. I yeah, thought it might be I mean, closer. nobody gives a fuck about JFK in California. Everybody cares about Washington. I mean, just, I think you are so northeast bubble that that yeah. can affect your mind there. Here, dude, nobody gives a fuck about JFK. No one. In yes. Texas, so much so that no. they shot him there, where it all went down. No, I mean they're probably. <laughs> That's glad how little that they care about lib. JFK in Texas. Like, I mean, they probably like that. Live JFK deserved one in the back of the dome. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, all right. That's that's fair. I, that, that, you were both quick to say Washington, so maybe it is Washington. Yeah, I all think right. it is in a Mich- land mystery slide. solved. I bet ninety percent right. more. In fact, wow. I, I mean, I would say exponentially more Washington. Interesting. I mean, just in okay. schools alone, like just in. How many high schools, colleges? All right. Hey, listen. I just needed that answered, and you answered it for me. So thank you very much. All right, now I'm not going to keep sleep droning on about it. All right, Cons, I apologize <laughs> for keep hammering about that. Uh, Kate, what about you? Uh, nothing crazy. I'm pregnant. Mm-hmm. For saying, and, uh... Yeah, I don't think she said that on this show. Kate's yeah. pregnant. She's with child. Yeah, I'm now, pregnant. Now, which one do you um... prefer? If you're talking, do you... Pregnant or with child? I like knocked up. Oh, knocked up. Okay. I'm knocked up. It Preggers. shows that I'm a little fun. I'm a little bit fun. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm pregnant again. I am very sick. It's not been an easy one. Um, 
But so I don't want to ramble on, but boy, what I would give to have a great poop. Yeah. Uh, people don't realize Ooh. what these hormones do to you, pal. Tell they, you what, Alex, I'm not supposed to probably say this, but there was a no, stretch. No, I bet you're not. Yeah, this is almost <laughs> as bet bad as not. when Clem started talking about tweaking his wife's nipples in front of her family so that it would induce labor. Yeah. <laughs> she was mad about yeah. that. Dude, right, people don't talking. realize all that goes into it. I would Kate, give anything. Kate, your TikTok, is that really a poop belly? <laughs> I think so, yeah. yeah. Wow. Good night. I, there's... All right, so you guys know I've been watching all these super fat show. Like, I've been doing yeah. TikToks and Instagram about it. I'm enjoying myself. I have said, because these people, I did the math. In order to maintain 600 pounds or more every day, you have to eat anywhere from 14 to 20,000 calories every day just to maintain that weight. Just to like maintain. Like a 500 weight. pound kind of weight? 600. Anything I over thought you were about to say 1,400. I no, thought you were no, going to no. say 1,400, 2,000. I was like, oh, that's not that bad. Like 14,000? Like we. Yeah, no, I know. Like yeah, 3,000, yeah. 4,000. Yeah, 15 to 20,000. Wow. How do they make, the, how do they have that much money to pay for that yeah. amount of food? No, this is why they don't get better. It's because it's not just them. It's like, it's usually a whole crew that's keeping them enmeshed oh, yeah. in this yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, lots of enablers. Yeah. Yeah, that's Big bad time news. enablers. But yeah. I always think, <clears throat> same thing with Joey Chestnut. After he crushes like 100 hot dogs in five minutes or whatever. That poop must be insane. Like they must, Joey Chestnut must go to Home Depot and be like, which one of these toilets swallows the most? Because that's what you need. Don't they puke it up? Don't they puke it all up afterwards? Either way, I want to see. I want to see the poop or I want to see the puke. No, I bet you they don't puke. Yeah, I I bet you they don't puke because that's there's no shot that puking is healthy. No, have to probably just sick. You choke, right? Not not only that, but like. That's that's equivalent to somebody being bulimic, I think, you know, and they always say that's not healthy for you. No, not but if you only do it once but... every couple of months, I feel like that'd be okay. Yeah. I just I think that mm-hmm. once it's down, it's down. Cause you can't throw. How are you gonna throw up a hundred hot dogs? Like it's got to go no. somewhere. It's got yeah. Uh, oh, that's well, anyway. crazy. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, you're pregnant. Congrats. Yeah, I know. Congrats, I know. Man. A little buddy for cash for the cash man. Gonna find out this week. What is, what are you, man? Do you What's have the vibe? A, yeah, do you have a preference? Ma'am, sir? You, guy, girl? No, you, not no? at all. Not at, yeah. Like, truly, not at all. Don't care. Um, just want the five fingers, five toes, you know? Just want the whole, you know. Katie, enchilada. girl mom would be fun, though. It would, because she'd be a bad bitch. She she'd would. Be, <laughs> not Kate, putting up. Kate doing makeup and Kate doing, like, hair ties and all that kind of stuff would be awesome. You think I would be able to do? No, this poor kid's no, going to be wearing. but you figure it out. You didn't know how to be a mom for a boy, either. That's true, but it was, I think, easier because I have no sense of style. We're just wearing hoodies around all day. I don't know. But, yeah, yeah no. Be, like Julian and uh, Big Daddy. Yeah. I'll figure it out, but we're exci- I'm excited That's what for you want to wear today? Okay. All right. Yeah, Good yeah, luck yeah, walking down the street. That's basically what I do with Cardi. I'm like, whatever, man. Mm-hmm. Like, just go wear whatever you want to. Anything well, by the also, way. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, really quickly. Oh, sorry. Big Daddy is Adam Sandler's best movie, and that's not up for debate. But go ahead. I agree. Kate. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I saw he's on tour right now, and I love he's yeah. just in Buffalo, and he showed pictures from the audience, and people are wearing full Scuba Steve costumes, and like <laughs> people are dressing up in the best stuff, and I love that. So yeah. that's fun. Yeah, he that's just it. seems like the best human, Adam Sandler. Yeah, just he seems so like laid good back dude. and chill, like always wearing hoodies and shit like being that rich yeah that clip of him showing up to the premiere in a hoodie and jennifer at the kennedy center it's not the washington center yeah oh there you go Mm -hmm. there you go Mm. (laughs) the kennedy center honors (laughs) yep um i don't have anything this week sorry kate i was bad on you for doing that for a couple episodes in a row no i don't have anything so we'll sound the retreat 